Over on Channel 2, Cooper's Crossing is in danger as a brush fire threatens. Meanwhile, Dr Callahan and Liz can't be reached on the radios and rumours fly in on The Flying Doctors at 9pm. But first, it's the Thames men. so quickly how good is that i know so welcome everyone to day one of paul kelly week the curated week put together by our good friend chris and it's going to be an epic week of five days uh sixth on uh patreon and my name is alex and i'm in colorado i'm george i'm in los angeles and this is a week we have been looking forward to for a very long time so apologies for keeping you waiting and we know we won't hit all the tracks and yes the comments will be flooded why didn't you do this do that but our (laughs) friend chris has struggled this week so you'll see him in the notes down below he's called chris a curator and uh leave him a comment because he does so much hard work really does we we couldn't do this without him so thank you chris so we so with no further ado we've got a double day a bonus on day one we're going straight in with two tracks so we're going to start off where we're going to start off alex we are going to start off with neil finn and paul kelly live in 2013 with before too long yeah which i think was apparently originally written in 1986 um and so we have some notes do you fancy them how are you feeling with notes ah all right let's give this a whirl right to see if i can do this all right let me get the notes up his first top 20 came from a double album gossip and helped bring him to the wider audience it was the first album to feature the band as the colored girls later the messengers i can understand why they changed the name messengers yeah, right. better. No, absolutely yeah. and they would stay with them for the next eight years guitarist steve Conley was an influence in the writing often coming up with riff riff riffs for the song kelly said steve had an uncanny ear for that song he, <laughs> he, what do you say about I'm, accents I'm, no i'm not doing an accent i'm trying to be him i'm oh, trying to be authentic oh, all right oh, i see got to go all right so, okay. carry, carry all on right. being authentic. just imagine i'm him right Okay, Steve yeah. had an uncanny <laughs> ear for a song. He always hearing the whole song and not just part of it. The video clip of the song featured Kelly as a long-suffering taxi driver dealing with uh, fractious passengers and helped him bring to the uh, growing MTV audience. This version is from the Neil Finn tour and son Elroy Finn on drums and Dan Kelly, Paul's nephew on guitar, and Zoe Hortman, yeah, I, if I pronounced your name, I'm hopefully Zoe, so on bass, who jokingly introduced as their cousin to keep it in the family. <laughs> and we saw when they did a, when we did the Neil Finn week, didn't we have a little trailer with them doing a little uh, sort of acoustic, the pair of them, just as part of their promo sort of thing? I no, was... no. What they did is they swapped songs, didn't they? That's right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they did each great, other's song, and oh, yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. But then we saw Neil Finn. He played with Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, that was a great week. That week. and then we saw his week. son play that wild one with uh, on um, with um, Jimmy Bond's daughter, uh, where uh, he played yeah. all the instruments. That was crazy, wasn't it? Crazy. That was, that was, that was probably that was really the best video for me of last year. That yeah, was a good one. Wasn't Very talented. Yeah. The whole lot of you, Finns yeah. and Kellys <laughs> and Bondses, Bondses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All right, so let's get on. Uh, so before too long, Neil Finn and Paul Kelly live in 2013. So uh, are you ready? Yes, please. Uh, three, two, one, go. Before too long, the one that you love, you wish that he never met you. Before too long, he was nothing but suddenly coming. Let the time keep rolling on It's on my side Lonely nights will soon be gone I it's the time Before too long We'll be together And nothing will tear us apart Before too long 
will be spoken I know all the action by heart As the night time follows day I'm closing in Every dog will have his day Any dog can win Shut the shade was absolutely perfect songwriting. It, uh, the performance was ridiculous. I agree. I all round absolutely effortless. The songwriting, the song. Uh, I tell you how effortless it was. You, that's the first time I've ever heard that. I feel like I know it. Yeah, and it was it was so well recorded and so oh, well no. performed. It was like it was like musical honey in my ears. It was absolutely brilliant. And the layers and the piano and when she came in with the backing vocal, every element of it was just spot on. Nailed uh, it. Neil Finn, God that pisses me off, right? Work <laughs> and slave at you know, the piano and no, he's not known for the piano. That was immaculate piano playing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything about that song was, and it was great songwriting, and just that was what a way to kick off the week, Chris. That I've, is, I I've mean, how are you going to top that one now? I've got the know? hook. I've got the hook straight off. Before too long, you know yeah. what I mean. And that's the first yeah. time I'm hearing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant. It was so accessible and so perfect. Oh, yeah. Well, that was the days before Uber, right? Because you had to wait <laughs> for the cab. But it was before too long. Right, but now, now, you know, you no. just, they just arrive. No. Or they just don't show up, one or the other. I wonder if they have <laughs> Uber in Australia. Of course they do. I imagine so. These things are all over the world now, aren't they? Like a yeah. nasty little rash, really, isn't it? Yeah. Like a nasty little rash. All right, George, well, the next track we're going to be doing, what is it? Well, it's going to be uh, Paul Kelly and the Dots and uh, a track called Billy Baxter from 1981. And, and so, yeah, this is... Uh, We've got some notes. So this is like early, early. So we're, we're starting with some early tracks, obviously. So so this one says, uh, the first band that Kelly put together to exclusively sing his own songs was The Dots in 78. Uh, they toured around for a few years and eventually received a record deal. In 81, they released their first album, Talk. And after a number of lineup changes and a delay from Paul having his jaw broken in an assault, their second album, Manila. Uh, Paul has since said he'd like to collect all the copies and bury them in a hole. <laughs> in a rare move, his record company agreed to follow his wishes, and apart from a CD issue in '91, there are no they are no longer available. Paul likened wow. it to a, Paul likened it to a writer not wanting their first drafts of his novel to be seen. 
but they do have some merit and show his growth as a songwriter, perhaps inspired by his learning the trumpet in, the early, in his teenage years. The song Billy Baxter was a scar styled tribute to the radio personality of the same name and was was the first and only top 40 hit from the albums. This so is going to be a bit really juxtaposed rarity. position, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. here he has learning his track. Obviously, the track we just saw before, as we said, was effortless. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just I mean, it was, yeah. guy at the top of his musical career, but here we are at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's going to be really interesting. So let's, let's see uh, Paul Kelly and the Dots from 1981. All right, so. count me in, big boy. Uh, are you ready, sir? Yeah. Three, two, one. Go. Next up, we've got Count Paul down. Kelly and the Dots with Billy Baxter. This is a this is Who a hit. The sax? Who played the sax? This is a hit. Camilleri's Fly By Night production of Billy Baxter. Paul Kelly and the Dots. Let's go. Ah! He's a lover and a gambler too Just to see him go through his paces It's a lesson for all the crew definitely different <laughs> there are bands around today back then if they wrote yeah. that song they would have still been milking it now that would have been their career yeah exactly yeah that's a really good point isn't it you know i'm, I'm yeah. not I'm, I'm not saying anything i'm looking at you ub40 uh but you know <laughs> they'll be out there touring on a uh, on a package tour on a on a boat somewhere uh, redoing yeah. that song and he decided it wasn't good enough and he dumped it i liked it I like it. I mean, Australian ska. Who knew? You know? Any moment now, there's going to be a fierce outbreak of ska. We did that ska week one time, didn't we? And, you know, and, and that, uh, you know, we all love a bit of ska. It's good, fun music, isn't it? It's good. I, I can see the influence. I mean, in the 80s, ska was so big, you know, that, uh, yeah. you know, it would have been yeah. hard not to kind of jump on the ska train mystery train <laughs> shall we say but that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't bad at all i loved it i love i love i love the hook i love the the sax um i love the backing singer i liked it all and i also loved that it's a little window into i suppose i mean it was countdown like the australian top of the pops or something like Probably, that you know because they, they yeah. were because it was obviously mimed you know there wasn't a microphone in sight you know and so they were just playing along to a track and things but 
you know, he- they could have had a bit more lighting. <laughs> it was a bit dark. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was fantastic. It was fun. Real fun. I, I think, you know, audio archaeology, isn't it? You know, seeing where yeah, something comes from. How many, how confident do you have to be in your uh, craft? In your, you know that you can do way better. After you do that, as I said, most people would t- just tour that and put, put it on a package and that was their one hit. He, yeah, yeah. you know. No, moved on. Yeah, nah. I can do better than that. I'm, I'm at, yeah. I want you fantastic shows how, how smart he is. I would have just banked it there. You know, that would have been it. <laughs> I would have lived, I would have lived off that. Do you remember, do you remember that track I had back in the 80s? Yeah, that, <laughs> that's, that's me playing the uh, drums. <laughs> Wasn't that the book, the the concept about, uh, was it Nick Hornsby's one of his book where he, he was like a, he'd had a one hit wonder and he had enough royalties to live off it. Was that High Fidelity or one of those sort of books? Do you remember that? Anyway, yeah, I remember High Fidelity, but he worked in a record shop. But we're not here to talk about Nick Hornsby <laughs> writing career. We're here to talk about uh, Paul Kelly and there's going to be a day two uh, immediately after, you know, well, yeah, well tomorrow. Yeah, and, and if you want to find out about it, like and subscribe, please. And, uh, you know, we we I can't wait to dive into more of this, so. Yeah. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much. You've given us a good juxtapose. I'm looking forward for day two because I know from seeing us later on stuff that we've done bits of it that he's going to he's going to turn way more epic. And the, the the smart thing about Chris is that he 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 has been a DJ. He builds he builds a picture as you go, and so I can't wait to see the path he takes. So. And a hairy roadie. <laughs> he was a hairy roadie. He was. <laughs> he All was right, weird. I'll see you on the flip side for day two. Can't wait. See you on the flip side. Bye. Bye.